The number of private schools in Delhi has increased from nearly 2,000 to 2,669 schools between 2011 and 2016. This growth in the number of schools necessitates an effective regulatory regime. Periodic inspections are the primary tool through which the Directorate of Education in Delhi ensures that schools are complying with all applicable regulations. Inspections, if done correctly, can incentivize schools to be transparent and accountable. In the 19th year of its Researching Reality Summer Internship Program, Centre for Civil Society engaged a few of the interns to understand how private schools are inspected in Delhi. Over a period of six weeks, the interns studied how inspections are conducted and found instances of excesses committed under executive discretion. They interviewed about 20 government officials and six school owners in Delhi. They also studied the procedure as outlined in the law and its on-ground implementation. Before getting into the process of inspections, let us first understand what are the different types of inspections carried on by the government of Delhi. The inspections could be A. For recognition B. For extension of recognition C. For upgradation, which means more classrooms or grades D. Routine annual inspections E. Complaint-based inspections and F. Special inspections Out of these, annual school inspections are conducted regularly and are written in the law. Section 24.1 of the Delhi School Education Act and Rules 1973 states that every recognized school shall be inspected at least once in each financial year in such manner as may be prescribed. However, the Directorate of Education does not have the capacity to inspect every school in Delhi on an annual basis. After all, Delhi has more than 2,600 unaided recognized private schools. The Directorate of Education selects and inspects about 60 schools per year. We found that an annual inspection has seven steps that can take up to 919 days. In step one, the Directorate of Education randomly selects the schools to be inspected. The exact details of how the schools are selected is not outlined in the law. The private school branch of the Directorate of Education releases the list of schools to be inspected. In step two, the private school branch lists the members of an inspecting panel. The director has the power to form an inspection panel or authorize his or her subordinates to conduct inspections. The number of members in an inspection panel varies from four to eight as the team leader has the discretion to have additional members. At least one government school principal is a member of the inspection team. This is critical to note because government schools compete directly with private schools. Having a government school principal inspect private schools is like playing in a cricket match where the umpire is a member of the other team. It is an obvious conflict of interest that can manifest in perverse outcomes. In step 3, a notice of the inspection is sent to the school. The law does not prescribe an advance notice period. According to officials, schools are usually given 10 to 15 days to prepare for the inspection. From inspection reports, we found that the notice can be sent 3 to 45 days before an inspection. In step 4, the inspecting panel collects a minimum of 46 documents and fills a 68-point checklist in 2-3 to three hours along with an inspection pro forma. The inspection involves a high degree of subjectivity and evaluation even as the rule 192.1 of DSEAR 1973 demands every inspection be as objective as possible. The question in the pro forma are loaded with vague constructs that are difficult to measure. For example, how thought-provoking were the teachers' questions, or how does the teacher inculcate love for the subject and love for reading? Looking at the responses given by the inspecting panel, we can see that such open-ended questions allow for a high degree of subjectivity. In step 5, the leader compiles all notes to draft the final report. The report is supposed to reach the headquarters within 3 days as per the order of inspection or within 15 days per DSER 1973, but in practice, it takes much longer. In step 6, the private school branch shares the report with the school. The report notifies the school authorities about the various deficiencies that need to be rectified and asks the school to send comments on the steps taken. In the files we studied, they were shared with schools within 69 to 573 days. In step 7, the private school branch sends reminders, warnings, or eventually show cause notices to enforce compliance. However, the follow-up action taken by the private school branch is also arbitrary as only one school in our sample received a reminder and a warning. All school owners we spoke to were of the opinion that inspections as they are being carried out right now are not able to help them improve their schools, rather they are being used as a fault-finding exercise that creates an atmosphere of stress and panic in their schools. 
inspectors tend to leverage any deficiencies they find to extort bribes from school owners and the same school owners are candid in admitting that these bri that they make these facilitation payments to avoid any further problems inspections rather than being used as a tool for compliance have become a tool for harassment the present parameters for inspections are sometimes difficult to measure or objectify leaving a lot of discretion to inspecting officials currently the reports in delhi are not publicly available if they were made public schools would have a greater incentive to rectify any deficiencies to avoid any negative publicity if we want to conduct inspections in a manner that ensures transparency and accountability we need to rethink how the directorate of education conducts school inspections for more information you may access our research in the anatomy of k12 governance in india we hope you like the video and as always like share and subscribe